Hello everyone and welcome back to Case Models. My name is Greg and today we're going to be taking a look at a new product from Mathern Genesis, the Union Pacific CA8 ICC Caboose. So stick around and I'll show you around the model, give you my thoughts on it, and then I'll show you it running around the layout. So stick around. So to start off I'll give you a little bit of a history on the prototype before I go into the uh, actual model. So the CA8 Cabooses were delivered in 1964 as part of one of the uh, last three classes of steel cabooses ordered for the UP. These were built by the International Car Company, the ICC, and about a hundred of them were built. The CA8 cabooses were the first to be delivered with roller bearing trucks as built, as well as the first to have the longer wheelbase that would appear in later generations of cabooses with a distance from the center of each truck at 23 feet and two and a half inches as compared to the previous generation cabooses that had a wheelbase of 21 feet seven inches. This specific number, Union Pacific number 25506, was delivered in July of 1964 and retired on December 15th, 1986, where it was then donated to the uh, Great Plains chapter of the National Railway Historical Society in Grand Island, Nebraska. One notable feature on Union Pacific cabooses was the slogans on the side on those uh, small white billboards. Uh, there were a bunch of them out there and Athern's offering several different banners that, on different cabooses for you to purchase. So now that we've gone over the history, let's go into the actual model. So Athern is selling this CA8 caboose as well as several other road names with their correct ICC orders. Now this specific model is equipped only with the D silent DCC decoder in order to control the lights. You can also purchase this model without anything in it or with a, a Tsunami sound card decoder. Athern advertises this caboose as having, quote, better than brass detail. I believe that's referring to the handrails, which are very well done. They're very fine, and it's nice to see those side handrails as separately applied grab irons instead of molded on detail. Now, the lighting in this model is LED, and it's a very nice warm white instead of a bright white, almost bluish like how we saw on the earlier Athern Genesis uh, caboose release, the Southern C-59s. Those, they're nice cabooses. I actually have one that I can bring into frame now. So, uh, as you see on the left, that's the Southern Pacific CA 50-9 caboose. No, it was released uh, a few years ago. This is part of the first run. I believe they re-ran this at some point. Uh, this one is equipped with the directional LED uh, marker lights on the roof, which is a feature I would have liked to see on this early CA-8. On the late CA-8s, they have that light on the cupola, which is lit, and on this model, you can see on the end of the roof there, you will see that there is a molded detail for a marker light. Now, I would have liked to see them try and put a small red LED in there. They probably could have fit a SMD LED. It is a small detail. I'll put that out there. It is a very tight fit, but I would have liked to see it, you know, for, with a, for a $100 caboose. All right, I shut off the lights in the room to try and give an idea of how the lights are on this model. Now one thing I noticed is the lights on this model are not very bright at all. They are equipped with a keep alive, so when you go over like dirty track or a switch or something they won't just immediately turn off. But one thing I did notice, and you could probably see it in the window, this window right here, that little orange thing, that is a wire for the lights. And if you look at it up close, I'll put a picture up on the screen now. It's very visible, and I would have liked to see better wire management in this model, especially since if you look over at the Southern Pacific model here. Now the lighting is a lot, a lot noticeably brighter on this model. You're able to see it on camera. 
but it does have a bluish tint to it, which obviously isn't right for a caboose from the 60s and 70s. It would have had a color like what we would see on the CA-8, but it's much more evenly dispersed. You could tell that it's lit, and I think that's, in my opinion, a lot better compared to uh, what is given to us in the CA-8. One other issue is when you look down on the model, like how you would when it's on a layout, you can actually see the pilot light for the decoder, which is that green light that you see in the cupola. I would have liked to see, it's not a sound decoder, it doesn't have a speaker. There's no reason that that shouldn't be covered by a black piece of plastic like a floor piece in the cupola, or they could use a decoder that doesn't have a pilot light on it, which wouldn't be that hard to find. I've actually, the only decoders that I've seen that have pilot lights are Tsunami decoders, which would be in an engine anyway, where you could hide the light. I don't know what they were thinking here, because I know NCE, this has an NCE uh, function decoder in it. I know NCE sells decoders that don't have pilot lights on them. I have one in I have them in a few of my engines. It's That's just a really weird design choice on Atherin's part there. Alright, this caboose is also equipped with uh, plastic McHenry couplers, which is standard on all Atherin engines. The, they're good couplers, they look nice, but if you're running this out of club and you have uh, steep grades and stuff, uh, you're going to want metal couplers on these. You know, I'm seeing on premium engines and stuff, and other cars like Tangent, Moloco cars, they all have metal couplers. I would like to see Atherin move towards putting metal couplers on the higher end stuff in the future. And uh, one other, one last thing that I had not quite right with this model is when I took it out of the box and put it on the layout to test it out, run it for the first time. Uh, one of the wheel sets would not stay in the trucks. This car has very weird trucks on it. It uses a weird system to hold the wheel sets in place. So right when I put it on the track, it wasn't really rolling very well. And it's a brand new Athard model. I thought there's no way that this thing is, needs to be you know, fiddled with to get working right because like that, that Southern Pacific caboose, when that, when I got that, I've never had problems with uh, Atherin rolling stock. But uh, sure enough, I picked up the model and a wheel set just fell right out of it. And I spent another maybe 10, 15 minutes trying to set, seat it back into the truck. I'll put up a picture on screen now of what the underside of this uh, caboose looks like. Also, while we're under here, note it has very nice underbody detail which is something that I like to see. I like to think I like to thank Rapido for uh putting underbody detail up as something that needs to be done very well on high end models. Now if you look at it you'll notice that you can see the uh the needle points of these trucks. And you could also see that the pickups for the lighting and the decoders are pieces of brass that are uh attached to the inside of the side frame. Apparently, that's supposed to hold the wheel set in so that they don't have to, you know, spread the wheel, the uh, side frames apart to uh, put a wheel set in like on a conventional wheel set. So, as a result, I think that uh, it was a, it's a brand new design, I bet. I, I haven't seen this before. If anyone else has, if this is something that's actually been around for a while and I was just unaware of, please let me know down in the comments below. Once I got it on the track and got it right, then it started rolling very nicely. You'd see it rolls a lot nicer now. And you'll be able to tell when I put the, uh, when I put this on a train and start running it around, which I think we should do now. So now that that's over with. Uh, I'll back a train up to it and we'll get it running. For motive power today, I'm going to be using a Broadway Limited Paragon 3 Union Pacific Challenger. This engine is equipped with the Rolling Thunder and I'm going to have the Rolling Thunder system active through what, during this running session. So, 
uh, in order to hear it. I recommend putting in headphones or if you have like a subwoofer, really good speakers. I recommend hooking those up in order to hear the low frequency sounds produced by the Rolling Thunder system. Alright, so that about wraps it up for today's video. As always, thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe and stay tuned for future video reviews and project updates. And stick around, I'll see you in the next video.